Good evening. I'd like to call the Rochester School Board, Rochester City Council Joint Building Committee meeting to order on September 11, 2024 at 6 p.m. First item on our agenda, for those able, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence and remembrance of 9-11. Thank you. Um, before we move on to item two, the approval of our minutes, I'd like to introduce to the committee our Director of Operations, David Reich, uh, Reichlich, that's Reichlich. right. Reichlich, I want to try to pronounce it correctly. This is the JDC. Um, just wanted to welcome you to Rochester. Thank you. Department. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Next item is the approval of our August 14th, 2024 minutes. So moved. Second. Okay. There being a motion by Don and a second by Matt Pappas. Any discussion or changes? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item three is our architect's update. Good evening. Uh, Ingrid Nichols with Vanwell Architects, and I have Matt Giffen, who's an architect who's been working on the project as well. Um, so we have some exciting uh, drawings to show you tonight. Uh, two items that we want to cover, the exterior uh, building materials and the color choices for those, as well as the gym floor choice that we've uh, chosen. Um, so we've produced uh, four different options, and we'll go through them on the, on the um, PowerPoint first. We have all four here on this, this board, so you can see them all at once, but we'll go through them one by one. And the samples of the actual materials are right there on the, uh, the table as well. Great. So we have four options here to look at, but in theory there may be a couple of extra options. For example, you may say, love the colors in that one, hate the stripes. Right? Uh, so we have four options listed, but we can certainly get into modifying what you see. Um, in, in each option, it's a similar concept. Um, so we always will have a concrete masonry unit gym, right? uh, kind of the blocks like this, but it looks a lot nicer than that. Um, the rest of the building has either a brick uh, wainscot or a full brick facade. And then above that is a, a cement board siding. It uh, looks like a, a clapboard that you would see on, on a house or, or on a building. Um, so again, it, we'll probably flip back and forth. Do you have control over I do. that? Okay. We also have the granite detailing that we had talked about during design at the top of the half brick between the hardy and the brick, as well as all of the bases of these columns here, and the sills for all of the windows throughout the building. Okay. And so what we're, we've played around with a couple different options. There's a what I would call a cool option, where we're playing around with different types of grays and maybe a warmer option where we're playing around with uh, some beiges or, or a color that plays off of the brick color. Um, so in this particular option, um, and again, I'm not sure how well it is, how easy it is to see for everybody here, uh, but along the top, we proposed a white clapboard, so more of like a pristine white with a white cornice, that, a decorative white cornice that comes around, white windows, um, in, in every option, we have the same brick color. Um, so the brick is kind of like a rust, uh, like a, a rustic looking brick that we felt really fit in well with Rochester. We didn't want a new, vibrant brick that comes off as pinkish. Um, so we felt that that was a very good, appropriate brick. So we kept that one brick for all options. Um, and again, it's, it's really hard to look at a rendering, so that's why we brought in the photos. Um, so white clapboards up top, a white cornice along the top, um, white uh, uh, white columns, a white gable with some signage that hasn't yet been designed, a white cupola with a lead-coated copper base, asphalt shingles um, that are, a, it's a charcoal gray, uh, best way to describe that, 
As Ingrid mentioned, um, we have a granite base, uh, a granite sill rather, that acts as a cap to the, the brick wainscot. Um, and then the, the gym itself. Um, so for the gym, that's the, that's the closest part of the building. That's, as you're entering the site, it's the biggest part of the building. So to us, it's like, okay, this one actually, even though it's probably it's just a simple boring box, it's the biggest thing that you can see. So we really wanted to give you some options there to look at. So in this particular option, we went very stripey. Um, some people hate the stripes, some people love the stripes, so I'm very interested in your feedback on this. Um, but with this one in particular, uh, we have a, a gray um, brick, as a, uh, sorry, a gray masonry as a base. Um, what you see here, these bands, that's actually the same brick turned vertically. It's called the soldier course that runs through here. So we have that same elevation running through here. Another brick course that planes out with the top of the, of the gym door that you can't see, but it's right here. Um, and then we alternate between a, um, it's, it's, it's almost like a, 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 it's a lot easier to see over there, uh, but a lighter gray brick masonry rather with a darker masonry. And that ch it stripes its way up and then this darker color becomes the band along the top. Uh, so I know I'm throwing a lot at you and I can bring this over and we can get a little bit more personal with it, but I certainly want to make sure that everyone on TV can see this. Um, if we can go, go to option two, please. Option two, uh, we've removed the stripes. Uh, we have gone with more of a warm color here. So this is a, uh, it's called an antique red. Um, it, it's not super red, but you can see in the sample it, it does have hints of red. Less stripes, so it's more of that field, lighter gray color. Um, we went with still white windows, so it's the same proposed white window as well as white cornice. But up along the top, we went with a slightly more gray clapboard. Um, so I don't know if you can scroll back real quick to the first so you can see that. So you can see it's a little bit whiter here. And then when we go back to the second option, it's gotten a little bit darker. Um, and when I show you the next option, we'll go even a little bit more darker with that as well. Um, again, same situation. The brick is the same, where, where you have the same charcoal asphalt shingle. And really the idea is that the cupola color will pick up whatever color is being represented on the, on the clapboards. Um, so if we could go to option three, please. So in option three, uh, we have reintroduced the stripes. Um, here we are doing a black window with a black cornice. Um, so I would say the first couple of options, with it being more white, that's more of a traditional New England color. Um, you know, a lot of white windows, white, white, um, white trim, fascias, etc. Here this is modernizing it a little bit more, so going with a, a dark bronze window with a matching cornice and the same concept with the, the brick except the, uh, the masonry rather, where instead of it being the red, now it's a darker gray. And then if we go to the fourth option, fourth option, now you can see uh, the, the, the masonry looks a little bit different here but the options here are all as described, except the clapboard up here got a little bit more gray. So it goes from you know, almost a white to an off-white to a very light gray. Warm colors or uh, cool colors. White windows, dark brown windows, white fascia and trim, dark bronze fascia and trim. So various options for that. Do you want us to pass around the board that has all of them on it so you can kind of see it? Because it's, it's subtle, but... Yeah, it's, it's very subtle. It's, yeah. Sometimes it's easy if you have a PDF, you can instantly flip back and forth rather scrolling. It's a little bit easier to see. I don't know where. So any that you hate, any that you love. I don't like the stripes. Yeah, second. <laughs> Next I don't either. Get rid of the stripes. So and we uh, ran this through the operations manager and facilities and making sure that there's no issues with any of the options on maintaining the material due to the winter, the storms, or just naturally up here. So we, we've chatted with Jim on a number of things. We, we've talked material. Yeah. Okay. I don't you know, care what color they make. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah, it's a great question. An example would be at the main entrance door, we would have proposed a white door because that would get a lot of fingerprints, a lot of junk on it. So that's so thinking about that. Um, but this this concrete masonry unit, this is the field color that we are proposing in all of the options. 
It's nice and light, has a lot of different colors in, 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 the, uh, in the stone there. And then these are the different colors that start to, uh, so this was in option one. Again, it's, it's almost easier to look at this than that. You can see that, that this is a lot cooler. You get to hear, this picks up on the brick. Um, so this is more of a play off the brick. And then this gets a little bit darker and cooler. And then this is the granite silt that is runs along the top of the brick wainscot and the, the, the window sill. And again, I, stop me if I'm kind of throwing too much information at you. I know, I know it's difficult, but um, these are the two options for the window. So a dark bronze and then off-white. And then, so these are the colors of all of the punched openings. So everything from these windows, these windows, those windows. The main entrance doors, which is a little hidden under here, um, as well as the entrance on the end of the building, on the two ends of the buildings, those would be aluminum. Um, so those are, it's a lot more of a durable product. And then so these would be the choices for those. So I think even in an option where we went with white windows, it'd be totally fine, in my opinion, at least to go with a dark bronze entrance. Uh, but if we felt that we wanted more of a white theme going around the building, then we wouldn't pick a white, we would pick a, uh, an, anodized, um, an anodized finish that's close to white. So I, I really think that with the brick, the black windows look a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like option four. That's definitely a better <coughs> <point. laughs> We met with the principal earlier today, too, and she chose option four, too. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to accept option four. Second. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Easy. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Then um, the gym floor. The gym floor. I, we can talk a little bit about how, as a, as a team, they'll show you some colors. But I want to give you the evolution of the gym floor that we did. If you recall, we needed a holding place for the cost of what a floor would be. I'm sorry. You got a question? Yeah, Sarah. Do you want to vote it real quick? Yeah. This uh, yeah. yeah. Second. Do we want to? Um, okay. So uh, Don made the motion to accept option four, and Matt Patha seconded the motion. Any discussion? I had one question. Mm -hmm. With option four, could we? Do we have to do black windows throughout the entire front facade, or could the white? windows be used where the clapboard is on the second floor or would we have to do all the same um, generally speaking we would like to be consistent um, I do know that when we write the specs for these we have bought one color and the moment you start introducing multiple colors then you start the, the, the price starts going up um, I guess from a standpoint of the window itself you see in the rendering and when you start looking at windows mm -hmm. the glass in reality looks black mm -hmm. so the fact that you have a dark bronze or a black frame it kind of makes it go away mm -hmm. I think if we did white here and a darker color here it wouldn't yeah. look quite right yeah. yeah good question yeah. but yeah. yeah, and actually just pick it, because we actually have uh, simulated divided lights. So these are actually large casement windows. Um, so casement windows swing um, in and out, as opposed to a double hung, which probably most of us have. Uh -huh. um, but it's been designed to look like a double hung. Um, so a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, typical to what you would see in this area. And so the reason why I mention that is because you have that simulated check rail, mm -hmm. as, as well as the divided lights. And what Ingrid's saying is that if some was black and some was white, mm -hmm. If the, the black one, you probably wouldn't even notice the, um, the simulated divided lights during certain times of the day, whereas the other ones, it would jump out like a right. sore thumb. Right. And people would probably be like, huh, I wonder why those windows are different. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, any other discussion, Kevin? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I guess I should have asked it earlier, or maybe you said that I just missed it at the very beginning. Um, but I know <clears throat> when I looked at replacing windows, the cost of black windows was double the cost of white windows. But do any of these options have a considerable cheaper cost than the other? Everything we presented today is the same cost. Oh, yep. Yeah. And we actually, there is black or bronze, so we could choose either one. So that's some difference. Just beyond my design. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> sure. So just just a, a quick recap, because not that there was you know too many options, but there was quite a few there. Um, so option number four is is white clapboards, black window trim. Um, where did that go? I think it's gray. Gray clapboard, I think it gray, was. Gray clapboard. Mm -hmm. Pearl gray. Much better. Right. I mean, that black window trim. Yep, so we can actually just hold this up just yep. like this. Black. And brick. And the And the And the yep. brick. And, yep. and then black trim, like across the top. Yep. And, and I will say, I think on day one, I might have preferred a lighter white for the clapboards, but on day 30, when the dust is starting to settle, I think this is far, I think it's just yeah. much appreciated. Can you that around the camera yeah. for a second? And, uh, and, the, and the cupola uh, color matches the clapboard. Yes. Does it still have a copper, is it a copper? A lead-coated copper. A lead-coated yep. copper. Yep. And the shingle, the asphalt uh, shingles are charcoal gray. Right. That's fine. Matt? Matt, you had mentioned the windows swing out. Is yes. there a benefit to that as opposed to the double hung windows? Because I know at Gonic School we replaced every window, and I think I think those pushed out. Yep. But I just want to make sure that is there a benefit to having windows that swing open? So one, they tend to be more economical. Um, I, I, we didn't do a direct cost analysis between a double hung versus that, um, but just a lot less moving parts. But for me personally, it's all about durability. Um, the moment you have windows that slide, all of your seals are sliding against each other, and that wears those seals out much quicker than a compression fit. Um, so we always try to we always try to use a, 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 a swinging type window just for a durability perspective. And also, we'll have window limiters on these, um, so that even if you had a double hung, you could still only open it four inches. Um, of course, that's the same with these these casements as well. Um, that's a it, code. Yeah, sorry. it's it's code requirement. We can't let kids fall out the windows, of course. And um, the in, in from an energy perspective, as as you might imagine, a casement window has uh, has edges around the four sides, and that's where your air escapes. With a double hung, it also escapes on that check rail as well. Okay. Yep. Um, I had another question, and I forgot what it was. Um, is there any? Um, stress on, with all the weight being on just one side, is there, over time, is there an issue with the windows that sort of start to lean, sag, leak? Yep, there, like that? there shouldn't be. Um, we are, we kept our window sizes under the custom window size option, so you can make these windows huge, but once you get over a certain size, and I don't know what that size is, um, that, that becomes a custom built window and you have to start putting reinforcement in there, so we avoided that, so this is a standard off the shelf type window that carries, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember what the warranty is. I want and to it's say a Marvin it's, window. Yeah, it, it's, it's a Marvin um, integrity window, okay. um, which is the next line up from the essential. Uh, so it's, it's a very high quality window. And we actually spent a lot of time talking with Windows about with Jim, um, more than he probably would have liked. <laughs> okay. Good. And um, hypothetically, being a climate controlled building, mm -hmm probably won't be opening windows much, right, if we're relying on AC. Correct. There, there was a, a, a time where someone with the school were thinking, hey, we don't want any operable windows in this whole school, but we thought the teachers would love to crack those windows open on a nice spring day. And honestly, from a safety perspective, it's nice to be able to pop a window open and climb out if you need to. Um, fire department always prefers that as well. Yeah. Can, can I just add something to yeah. that? In East Rochester, we through our control system, we put in window switches. So if we know if a window's open, maybe we shut the AC off. We, we can tie that together with our control system. Okay. Just because, you know, if we're trying to control humidity in our room yeah. and they're bringing in humidity, we probably need to stop because we'll make it rain. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we can handle that through the control system. But it is nice to have an operable one. And then lastly, on the double hung, it's really hard to get any company to tell you a, a double hung window is ADA compliant because you have to have a minimum of, I think it's five pounds of pressure maximum to be able to operate a window. And, and that would be a big window. And it, over time, as those seals start to seize up and stick, be, they become not ADA compliant, whereas the cranks are a lot easier to maintain. Yeah. 
Any other questions, discussion <coughs> regarding option four? All right, so the motion is to accept option four as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. On the, on the uh, sports floor, we started, uh, as we said, about a year ago when we were pricing things and we had this particular floor had been attracted to us. We weren't totally enamored with it, but so after a while we began looking at alternatives. Jim Letourneau also gave us an alternative that he has at one of his schools, and we came up with a type of material that goes down and then has welded seams on it. And we were able to work with our vendors and basically get, but we had carried $65,000 for the floor. We are able to get this floor. It comes in a variety of colors that Matt's going to show you. We're not looking for any choices tonight. We're just showing you that we'll be studying these colors over the next month. And then we also, for a $5,000 upcharge, were able to go with a little thicker pad, which we thought was good for our kids in the elementary school for rolling around on it. So we were able to stay within budget and give you this product. And he can now just show you some of the different colors. And again, we'll go back and then we'll present to you later on in another month or two the colors. Um, so it has a lot of wood looks, um, so whether it's oak, maple, um, you know, wet weathered oak, there's a lot of different options. There's also options for colored wood, um, so at the free throw line, for example, a lot of times that's a full flooded color, we can get that color as well. Um, we'll have volleyball court, although we're in discussion about maybe removing that, but that's a topic for the principal. Um, a couple four squares. Um, on the screen there is a rendering that we did for this, for, for your gym, uh, for this coming gym. Um, so this is an example of a maple floor with blue painted lines. Um, again, there's the, the colors are subject to change based off of, of our discussions. And honestly, everything, any color you see in that image is also um, up for debate. Um, whether the wall pads, the paint, the, the acoustic panels, all of that are colors that we'll be making in the near future. Um, a, a couple, couple other uh, uh, hot topics about this floor is that the floor that was originally specified can only be installed on a floor um, with a very uh, low percentage of moisture. So there was a high probability that we were going to have to pay many, many thousands of dollars extra to mitigate the moisture in the floor in order to put this down. So this is a $5,000 upgrade. But there may be a net savings that we, because we don't have to knock on wood, you never know until it comes time to install the floor. But there's a high probability we don't need to use moisture mitigation. So this floor actually may cost less at the end of the day. And that will be tested before this floor is put down. Yep. Like pouring yes. the holes. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're all interested in just feeling the product. Yeah. Um, so this is called an athletic floor. Um, it's very common to put these in everywhere from elementary schools all the way up to college. Um, there's different types of athletic flooring depending on the use of the room itself. So for example, if this is a multi-purpose room and you have tables being rolled around, you actually would spec a floor with a lot less cushion because the more cushion there is, the more likely it is for something with a high point load to get in there and, and puncture it. Uh, we have a separate cafeteria in this project, so we're not going to be carrying on a day-to-day -day basis all these heavy point loads that could potentially do that. So by having more foam on there, that actually uh, increases that shock absorption. And in particular, for me, having an eight-year-old, I'm thinking of the amount of times they trip and fall and whack their heads. Um, so this is going to be a very safe floor for uh, reducing cushions and things like that. Uh, but it's still great for bouncing balls. Um, if you're on a, a maple, like a true wood floor versus this, and you're playing basketball, um, you can barely tell the difference. Mm -hmm. what's, what's like warranty on this stop cutting um, and repair if this does get punctured. Yep. Yeah, so the repair is very easy. You so cut it out. And, and they, uh, it, it, there's a bunch, bunch of different kind of patterns on here, right? Um, so you can see this, this, this look here versus this look. But eventually those patterns do repeat. So you can actually find that exact piece, cut it, cut it out of your floor, get another piece and put it in and you weld it into place and you're good to go. Is this coming out, is this like sheet vinyl? Is this kind of it comes in rolls. It's, rolls I believe rolls. it's six feet or eight feet, and they roll it out. It comes in uh, 100, 200 foot rolls, something like that. Yep. So it gets rolled out, glued down, 
seems welded, and it basically becomes one um, kind of control old floor. How does it compare to vinyl planking as a raw floor? So, so if a vinyl floor doesn't have that padding, um, so actually we brought the pamphlet here. We also just installed this, well, five or six years ago now at the New Market Elementary School. Yep. So if you go to the next slide, this is an actual photo of uh, New Market's gym. And it's the same product. And this is six years old, five or six years yes. old now? Yep. And holding up? Holding up. Yep. Um, so it has this fiberglass mesh as a protective top layer. Um, so I apologize, I apologize that everyone can't see this. Um, and then you have the sheet good inside here that, have, that carries the color and, and just kind of what you see. Then after that is the shock absorption um, foam. Yep. Um, again, what's on the other elementary school floors? It's so pool, poolastic, is that what it is? We have a poolastic floor at Rochester Middle School, which is a poured vinyl product. Vinyl. Spalding is filled as grade maple. Probably Garnick. Garnick has a two by two vinyl square product in okay. it. Yeah, so vinyl, for example, that would be the most risk as far as someone being injured. So that's always like if we have no money, that's what we do. Um, but we always try to put some sort of shock absorption in there. With a plastic product, we explored that quite a bit leading up to this. Um, it was quite a bit more money, and the relative humidity in the slab was not as forgiving as this, so there was still a scenario where we would have to use moisture mitigation. And the plastic, I don't remember off the top of my head, but that was many tens of thousands of dollars more. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's popular in Europe where they treat their gyms like palaces. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go in there with dirty shoes. Mm -hmm. They're only used for what they're supposed to be used for. Mm -hmm. So it's not very forgiving. Okay. And honestly, I, in my opinion, this product is really the best of the polastic, meaning once the seams get welded, it's a uniform component. It's easier to repair, has the same warranty. Um, yes, a warranty, I, off the top, it's, I think it's 20 years, but it could be 25. Uh, but it's an excellent warranty. and. Um, it's, it's really the best of, of what Jim had originally requested, but also it comes with that safety factor. And it's waterproof. Is it waterproof? Yeah, I would say more water resistant. Um, but yeah, you could, I mean, it's all welded, and the top of it is waterproof. I, I always hate to call things waterproof yeah. just because it's eventually something will fail. Uh, but yeah, it's, unless it gets gouged and then water gets under it. Um, at that point, it would be waterproof, but it's it's resistant up to something like 98% relative humidity. Mm -hmm. So even if the water did get under there, that concrete would absorb that water faster than it could damage that floor. So outside of a sprinkler leak or something mm -hmm. more catastrophic. But the cleaning process, it can be mopped, it can be... Yep. Um, yep, yeah, Jim doesn't have to buy any fancy equipment to clean it. Um, no harsh chemicals that you wouldn't want your kids to be around. Okay. Um, very easy to clean. And it'll handle snow, salt, and anything else we treat the uh, road, sidewalks with? Yep, uh, it, it, just like all flooring, you have to clean it. Um, so if you don't clean it, then that's a problem. So on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing the maintenance schedule will be fine. But we also, as, as part of the entrance to get into the building, we put in a lot of flooring that, that rips all that stuff off your feet to minimize that. So, you know, something like a porcelain floor would certainly be more durable to, you know, salt or whatever we're putting, but um, very durable, yes. And it is a 25-year work warranty. Let's check. Limited or? 25-year product and wear warranty. I'll have to look to the next, deeper for that rest of that answer. And, yeah. Yeah. How long has this, has this product been in use? Uh, it's been around for many decades. Mm -hmm. and it, just like most flooring products, it always gets its start in Europe. Um, so it's, it, don't quote me on this, I want to say it's been in America for 20 or 30 years, but I believe it's been in um, Europe for even longer than that. Yep. Have you guys been using it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's a school that we designed. Uh, that's okay. that's a new market. Yeah. Yep. Shane? When did you say we needed to know like, like 
Not so much the flow and color, but like where you have just in your flow. When's the deadline that we need to decide that? Uh, it's funny, we were just chatting about that today. I don't know when we have to make that decision. Um, we were speaking with Annie. Um, a lot of times we'll play off of a school color in the gym. Um, so we were curious if, like, when a school color and, and, a, and a mascot would be picked. Yeah. Uh, but we, we were, I would imagine, a month or two away from needing to pick a gym floor. Like, th this is, these things have a quick lead time. Yeah. Quick lead time, yeah. 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 So this is going to be the figure out at our building and to the full board. The decisions are made at JBC. For color. Yeah. Even the uh, colors? Because yeah. I know we choose a school at the school board level. We the, choose the name of the school. Anything building design related is okay. handled by JBC, except in the naming. What about the mascot? That's, the mascot's going to go along with the colors, that's why. School would Yeah, school. I think we can safely say two two months before we need to know them, and we wouldn't design it around your mascot and school colors yet. So I think the mascot would be at the school board level. School two years. Yeah. Not the school board. The school. Would anyone like to hold on to this brochure? It's common. It's not coach basketball seasons at <clears throat> McClellan. I don't remember what kind of floor that has. ECT. Okay. It's a vinyl product. Yeah, vinyl. With little to no vinyl bad, tile. Right? Regular old fashioned. And then um, Gonic School. <clears throat> they both were great. I think they were a little firm on the floor. So I think the padding for that age is probably a good upgrade. You know, as long as it doesn't take away from balls bouncing and stuff like that, then that's, yeah. I think it's a good option. Yeah. And if we were talking about a high school, we would be having a different conversation about the shock absorption because at the high school level, that the dribbling becomes a little bit more yeah. partic particular. Mm -hmm. uh, but for an elementary school, we tend to err on the side of safety over, so, yeah. <laughs> Steve? Annie, can you place that uh, the name and mascot on the school board's calendar to be brought up at some point? Work with the chair and then bring it up to us so we can get that moving. Great. Right. Any other questions or comments regarding the gym floor? Okay. Next on the agenda, item four, is our construction manager update. Jason is on vacation this week, so I'm Kim Pishka, Assistant Project Manager for Harvey Construction. Um, so right now, most of our um, roadway base is ready, uh, or is complete. Um, our concrete foundations are 95% complete. Uh, the only remaining foundations are our site access into the building. That foundation has not been done yet. Um, our foundation backfilling is also mostly complete. Um, retaining wall construction um, along the back is uh, complete except for the cap on the last 30%. Um, elevator shaft construction um, started last week and is more than halfway completed today. Um, under slab utility installation is also ongoing right now. Um, in the next week, we are going to be starting steel. Uh, it is currently scheduled to arrive on site next week, which is very exciting. And the gym uh, CMU block is also scheduled to start next week. And that's it. Great. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item five is our owner's representative report. Good evening again. And as we said, we're going to keep true to our promise. Every month we're going to tell you how we're doing and we are on time and we are on budget. So as far as having to dip into contingency money, we, we provide the whole rest of this packet. There's 52 pages and you can see in there where we've, we've had some items, but nothing of a drastic nature that we've had to go into contingency for. So we're still very, very comfortable. Uh, kitchen bid, bids have come in and we had a, a lively bidding. We had three bidders on that. And we have bought everything except the exhaust fan. The exhaust fan is its own world. And that's about a $40,000 of its own world. And the bids there are coming in. There's a 40, a 45, and a 50. And we really want to evaluate and make sure apples to apples on that. So that one we haven't bought yet. But we have bought all the rest of the kitchen stuff. And that came to around $370,000. So 
we're starting to be active on the owner's side with that. Promethean boards, you're providing Promethean boards for all your classrooms. There's 23 Promethean boards, and we have purchased those as of today, sending a purchase order in uh, to the system to be, to be processed for $120,000. So those are some good big purchases out of the way. Next thing's coming up, and I don't see Mr. Mayor here, but just we, we want to keep flagging on a monthly basis the Ida Circle. Anybody have an Ida Circle update? If you don't, that's fine. Okay. It's moving forward. It's moving forward, yeah. And, and again, just to remind everybody, our only trickle on that is we're, we're betting the farm that we're going that way, and we know you're going to come to successful conclusion, but we just want to keep track of it. We will in the next month be doing the furniture bids going out. Now that you've chosen a uh, principal for the school, I'm going to have her get involved. Uh, I've talked with her today, met with her, and we're going to have her touch, touch and feel what she would like to have for the furniture. We have it pretty well decided as what's going to be, what's going to be uh, purchased, but let's put the finishing touches on it, and then we will go out to, again, act a bid on, on that. We also know you have the state uh, process that you can buy through so we we weigh that as well and we talk with all the bidders about items that they can buy through the state that they'll they will buy through the state bidding process because uh, we've started talks with consolidated communication on bringing the fiber in and that's that's progressing and over the next month probably into the November time frame we're going to begin starting getting into the card key system intercom cameras that sort of thing and button those up. Again, we'll, we'll pass drawings by you all so that you know that we're doing it well and that we're, you get a chance to touch uh, and feel it. That's all I had, and I do owe one answer. I will get back to you on the warranty details. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll send it to Madam Chairman, and then you can distribute the answer. I'll, I'll take it to the next level of depth, get to you in the next day. Yes, sir? RTU units have been ordered? Rooftop units. Um, that would be you. Sure Transformer. Transformer. We uh, are still tra tracking our fall 2024 um, deadline. Uh, we have to run the conduit before we can 100% do it, and that's currently underway. But the track, uh, the old things, everything's been ordered that we would need to comply with the state electrical. There's two parts to that. Just not to, and if we sometimes use the word transformer interchangeable, so I don't mean. Yep. The one, Eversource will be bringing us in the transformer. Yes. They won't give you an exact date till they see the pad sitting there with concrete waiting for it. So we're kind of playing a game with them saying, come and look at it and see it and put us in the queue. But they technically can't, they can't. say, so if we hit an ice storm in November and everything fell apart, that's out of our control. But short of an ice storm happening in, in November and eating up all of the the transformers, we are, we are assured by them that we'll be fine. Okay. okay. The other part of the question, which is interchangeable, is the, the, what we call the main distribution panel. That main distribution panel is what we paid extra to get underway, and it is underway, and that's, that went out the door a month, month and a half ago when you heard us talking about that. So both of those are, we feel under control, but Eversource, again, just, they, they have their get out of jail card that they keep. And then I would say, keep Mr. Turn off. Uh, and the operations manager and going with the control system because now control systems uh, want a lot more information based off of the RTU units we're ordering and making sure they integrate to, with one another. Back to Jim, you, you can answer that one best. Yes. We're ordering all our rooftop units are coming there. Okay. The controls company is putting all the controls in them so we don't have to deal with a back net. And are the things that go with that that you can't see? Yep. So they're all getting ordered there. Okay. We did that on a lot of products, so that, that's a good example on the controls. We wanted it to not be, uh, you know, a brand Z control. So everything's going through what, what you currently have. But we do the same thing on other items, it's something as simple as the toilets. They don't want to have five different kinds of toilets that they're trying to fix. They want to keep parts for one kind. So we've done that on a number of products, just so you all know. But always ask that, and we'll. We'll, we'll, we'll document it. Yes, sir. And the other thing I want to go ahead and is uh, we took advantage of the city's contract with Eastern Propane. Uh, 
because you already have a signed contract with them. The price was cheap. They've given us the tank farm for free. Uh, I think total installation on our end is like $2,800 for the tank farm and the pipe. And that gets our gas into the building. So it's a pretty good deal. And with the city already having a contract, it worked out in our benefit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then um, just should have all received the monthly report, which has a lot of great pictures of the current progress. Um, all right. Anything under other item six? Okay. Uh, there being no other, I'll open public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to address the GBC? I got nothing. All right. I'll what? close public comment. Okay, they're doing a great job over there at the site. All right. Great. The dust is being limited. They're constructing like crazy. They're working like a fine orchestra. And uh, it's all copacetic. I can see it all from my deck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Matt Pappas, seconded by Don. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.